this week on Outdoor Bound TV. Winter comes early to the mountains of Alberta, Canada. But it's in this majestic place that one northern Wisconsin native will create memories that will last a lifetime. For it's this place that trophy mule deer call home. And later, the outdoors of Wisconsin come alive with activity during the opening weekend of the archery whitetail season. But for one Eau Claire, Wisconsin native, spending time in the woods takes on a whole new meaning. There's a fish. We got him. Look at that. Nice buck. Did you get that one? Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Colby Chrysler Center. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Canada Outdoor Adventures, professionally outfitted hunting trips from Canada, New Zealand, and beyond. I'm John Kootenay from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and you're watching Outdoor Bound TV, and we'll be right back after these messages. At Kobe Chrysler Center, we know you have more important things to do than worry about your car. So let us take care of you. Whether you need routine maintenance or need a major repair, we are not just fixing your car. We are helping you get back to the things that matter to you. When it comes time for a new car, we'll be there, giving you the biggest selection with no pressure or red tape. If you're looking for a used car, know that our stock comes from people we know. People just like you. At Kobe Chrysler, it's all about making you feel at home and ready to hit the road. Welcome home to Kobe Chrysler. Conceptual design, quality printing, and custom applications. Pro Designs Sign and Printing Solutions. Over 20 years of professional service and experience. Pro Designs in Medford, from original concept to finished product. Get the recognition your business deserves. Pro Designs Sign and Printing Solutions. Offering professionally guided, all-inclusive packages, Canada Outdoor Adventures is a U.S.-based company specializing in great hunting adventures in Alberta, British Columbia, New Zealand, and beyond. Whether you're seeking that trophy of a lifetime, planning a hunt for you or your group, or taking your son or daughter on their first adventure, let Canada Outdoor Adventures handle all the details for you. To contact a pro staff member near you, visit our website, Canada Outdoor Adventures, the adventure of a lifetime. Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound. I'm your host, Kurt Walbeck. On today's show, you're gonna meet Doug Etten. Now, Doug's from Monaco, Wisconsin, and he is headed to Alberta, Canada on a mule deer hunt. Now, this is a late season hunt. It's November, and in Alberta, the weather's cold and the snow's on the ground. Let's catch up with Doug. For Monaco's Doug Etten, a typical November day may be covering local hunting and fishing activity or preparing a story on the upcoming Wisconsin deer hunt. Doug is the adventure and outdoor editor of the Lakeland Times. But this Medford, Wisconsin native will be leaving the typical Midwestern tradition of opening day in the Wisconsin Northwoods as he embarks on a new adventure, high in the mountains of Alberta, Canada, in search of mule deer. Hi, I'm Doug Etten from Monaco, Wisconsin. Like any outdoorsman in Wisconsin, hunting's in my bloodstream. So when I got the opportunity to go up to Alberta, Canada and hunt for mule deer, I was pretty excited. So I did a little research and, and got hooked up with Canada Outdoor Adventures out of Wisconsin here. And working with my outfitter was a real pleasure. I mean, they made sure that every, every base was covered when it came to uh, making sure that I had everything I needed to get into Canada number one and then be able to hunt. Um, it, all I had to do was pretty much show up at the airport with my passport. Uh, it made it really, really easy for me to just kind of, you know, relax and enjoy the trip and really focus on what I was there to do. And that was to hunt. We got on the plane and we were Alberta bound. Touched down in Calgary, Canada, Alberta, Canada, and uh, that was cold. Uh, I remember that. We stepped off the uh, stepped off the plane onto the tarmac there and uh, into the tunnel, and boy, it was uh, it was like we were entering another world almost. So 
Um, but uh, tell you what, coming out of the gates and seeing my outfitter waiting there for me, it was a lot of fun. Um, being able to, you know, see a face when you got off the plane and knowing that that person's going to be with you all the way throughout the hunt was uh, something special too. So it's about a two and a half hour drive over uh, to camp from Calgary. So it uh, gave us an opportunity to, you know, to get to know our, our people that we were up there with, uh, whether it be other hunters or our outfitter, our guide, anything like that. We got to Rocky Mountain House, which is pretty much like the last bit of civilization you're going to see. You, know, you cross over the Saskatchewan River and it's pretty much wilderness from there, which is a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of the things that you see, you're in the foothills, so you start to see some peaks coming up through the, uh, through the clouds and that. And along the roadside, you're watching mule deer, you're watching elk, you're watching white-tailed deer, and uh, it really gets you excited to get to camp. And uh, it's not just any camp, it's uh, definitely a, a luxury accommodations when you get up there too. Um, you know, you got a nice bed with a warm comforter on it. And I tell you what, uh, the meals that you get up there are just fantastic. It's like uh, a fine dining experience almost of sorts. So, uh, you know, they really make sure that your experience outside of hunting is as pleasurable as what it is on the mountain. And we sat down for our safety meeting with our guide and with our outfitter and we talked about everything that we wanted to go over to make sure that our hunt was going to be number one safe and number two pleasurable. You know, they really ask you your opinions on what you want. Well, I remember getting up in the morning and it was cold. I mean, it was uh, somewhat 20, 25 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, which, uh, you know, made for a little, you know, convincing to get out of the cabins, of course, your first time up there. but. You're so excited, your adrenaline's pumping, you don't even notice that the, uh, the mercury is saying what it is. So uh, you're out in the foothills and you're, you're getting ready to glass as soon as the sun comes over the horizon. And I tell you what, uh, from the minute that we stepped foot into that, uh, into that truck and got out into the hills, when we started glassing some, some mountainsides, we were seeing deer left and right. One of the first bucks that we saw was up the mountain from us. And you know we weren't quite sure whether or not early in the day, we had not seen a lot of hillsides yet. We wanted to do some more glassing you know, whether or not this was going to be a deer that we really wanted to go after. And I wanted to go and get a good deer. You know, it's my first time in Alberta, but I really wanted to make it a worthwhile trip. So, you know, I told my guide and my outfitter, I said, hey, let's go see if we can find something better. Um, so after, you know, we glassed a few hillsides, saw a couple smaller bucks, a few more deer. You know, I told him, I said, hey, let's go back and take a look at that one again. See if we can see if we can get a shot on him, maybe. Came by this morning. We saw that buck bedded up on the top of the hill while he was actually standing. He was with a doe. We got the scope on him and he looked like a pretty nice deer. But we wanted to go down and see whether or not we had one down in the bottom of the valley here. We came back up through here and he's standing there again and we got a little better look at him this time and he's a nice buck so we're gonna try and put a stock on him here and see if we can't get a good shot, so. Uh, we could see he was a good four by four mule deer, uh, something that was gonna be a good shooter. So we didn't wanna pass up on him twice. Um, talked with my guide about how we wanted to go up the mountain after him and, and how we wanted to pursue a good shot and pretty much started up the mountain after him. So my guide Mark and I would talk about it and said, well, hey, let's go up the hill to the right here a little bit and see if we can't get around on top of him. So we started coming up the hill. We thought we could get underneath him and get a shot going up over the top of a little knob. But we got halfway up the hill. It didn't look like we were gonna be able to get a good shot. So we're actually sneaking up the entire ridge behind him. We're gonna see if we can come in on the back side of the ridge on top here and see if we can't get a better shot going down. It takes the sun out of the picture. We think it'll be a little less noise, so we'll see if it works. So once we started up the mountain after this deer, we knew that uh, we had pretty much everything in our favor. Uh, the second time that we looked at it, we knew that we had to uh, have the sun in the right direction had to have the wind in the right direction and everything was playing in our favor. So as soon as we got to the top of the hill, it was like, okay, now we don't see the deer. And Mark, my guide said, all right, well, you gotta be ready. It's now or never sometimes with these things and if you wanna get a good shot, you're gonna have to be ready. So uh, we tested out the shooting sticks, made sure I had a good rest and uh, tell you what, as soon as we silhouetted ourselves over the top of that hill, we saw those does and we knew the buck was right behind them. So Mark set up the shooting sticks for me, I got down. Uh, we saw that he was hit really good. You know, we didn't know exactly how good though. Um, you know, these are 300 pound mule deer and we weren't quite sure that this thing was actually gonna die with one shot. I got him good with the first shot, I think. He made it down the hill. He was, he didn't feel good. But I think we got a good shot. So we're gonna go see if he's all over the ridge here. We got him. All right, we got him. 
right. Cool. I got a good shot at the at the deer kind of quarter away from me and I hit him with my first shot and he wasn't gonna go far so came down the hill here and he rested next to a log and I got myself a nice mule deer. So he is done. Oh that's a nice Boy, he's got some mass too. Yeah, he's not a young deer. He's an older deer. That's an Alberta Canada muley right there. He's a goodie. He's Thank goody. you, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so when I first saw this deer in the morning, I wasn't quite sure how big it was. Uh, second time I saw him, I was a little more convinced. And then after killing the animal, I tell you what, walking up to that thing uh, was like something else. You know, he was a he was a good good sized mule deer, and I'm really glad I didn't pass on him. Um, you know, knowing that he had at least a 4x4 four four on him, uh, finding out that he was a 5x5 five five was even greater. Hi, I'm Doug Etten from Monaco, Wisconsin, here in Alberta, Canada, with Canada Outdoor Adventures. Uh, third week in November, and getting close to the end of the season up here, and we've been out scouting for the last couple of days, and we've been seeing a lot of good bucks. Uh, we caught the tail of the white tail uh, rut right at the end, and right now the mule dealer are chasing hard, so we've uh, been seeing a lot of good deer. This one here we saw this morning when we first came out, we glassed it on the mountainside and came by again and we uh, stalked him, put a nice little uh, move on him around the top side of a mountain, came down and got a good shot. And I'll tell you what, he's been a great compliment to my week up here. Overall, it's been one of the best experiences of my life and I can't wait to come back and get another one like this. We'll be right back with more great hunting and fishing action after these messages. Visual acuity. Enhanced vision. Improved shooting. Competitive edge. 100% guarantee. Bow tint archery lenses. Created by optometrist Dr. Perry Arndt. Helping redefine hunting and competitive archery by utilizing tinted optical lens technology to enhance clarity and focus. Dr. Arndt, an avid sportsman, uses tinted lenses in his eyewear to enhance his competitive edge while trap shooting. Bow tint scope lenses are specifically designed to increase focus and clarity. Hi, my name is Perry Arndt and I'm the founder of Bow Tint Lenses. I'm an eye doctor, an optometrist that has been practicing in Wisconsin for 38 years. And I really love my job. But there can be times that my job uh, can be a disadvantage. And actually it's times when, for instance, I'm playing a sport like baseball, or maybe shooting a bow, or playing golf, and I hit a ball out into the woods somewhere. It's very common that people say to me, have you had your eyes checked lately? Well, one of my friends that I was actually shooting with, his name is Tony, and he asked me one day if it was possible to develop a lens that would work in the scopes of bows to improve the ability to see and sight for bow hunters. Well, with my background in optics and tints and anti-glare, I took that challenge and worked on developing a lens that had magnification, certain tints, tints that would, for instance, highlight a target and diminish the background, have an anti-glare and even a corrective curved surface for better optics and less distortion. Bow tint lenses allow archers to improve arrow accuracy, whether hunting or in competition. Bow tint archery lenses. Improve your competitive edge and order today. You know, some of the neatest things about hunting in Alberta is not just the animal that you're going after, but all the animals that you see around that. Uh, you know, obviously I was up there on a nice mule deer hunt, was able to tag out with a nice mule deer, but the, uh, the opportunity one morning to go out and all of a sudden we're, we're driving along a meadow and you look down and you see some of these big bull moose, um, or you're, uh, you know, you're coming into Nordegg and you see all these elk that are, uh, you know, almost like town pets around the town there. You know, they're out on the golf course that's in town there and uh, um, it's, it's kind of neat just seeing these type of animals so up close with you when uh, you're not used to it. You know, coming from northern Wisconsin, of course, you know, you get up close and personal with wildlife every now and then, but I tell you what, it's nothing like Alberta, Canada. I tell you what, uh, watching these mountain sheep come down these cliffs at Abraham Lake and, and water was something else. Uh, we got into a couple of big herds of them out there in Banff, and uh, watching some of the, some of the bighorns uh, take, take charge in some of these groups was a lot of fun. 
Uh, you know, you can get right up, I mean, as close as 15, 20 feet away sometimes from these things, and they don't even bother that you're there. Uh, so it really affords you the opportunity to get out there. And for me, it was fun. You know, I, I took my camera along, got out there, uh, took some of the best outdoors uh, photos I've ever taken in my life. Uh, you get out there in the mountains and you're able to see some of these things, you know, the bighorn sheep and the elk and the mule deer. Um, you know, it's just, it's some of the most fantastic interaction that you'll ever get with wildlife. And I can't wait to go back and, and do it again. Hi everyone, we'd like to see your photos of the animals that you harvest this year. If you'd like to have them included on the show, log on to our website, www.outdoorbound.tv and click on the submit video button. It'll give you all the instructions right there. Keep them coming, we love to see them and we'd love to have them on the show. Hey Doug, congratulations, that's a great buck and a great hunt. Next we're going to meet John Kootenay. Now John's from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and he's hunting in Rusk County. Now he's out with his bow looking for a whitetail. Let's catch up with Johnny. John Kootenay literally spends most of his life in the woods. Perfect day to be out, the bucks are rolling. Man, I can't wait to be out hunting. I should be hunting instead of working. Now John is not a full-time hunter, but rather a professional logger. John operates a forwarder, the piece of equipment that gathers and transports down trees to a nearby landing and an awaiting log truck. Now where does John go on his day off? Well, it's back to the woods, his passion chasing Wisconsin whitetails with his bow. Hey, I'm John Kootenay. I'm from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Um, I currently work in the logging industry. I run a forwarder, and so I try to get out hunting as much as I can in the off season. The piece of property that uh, we're hunting here is uh, it's in uh, Russ County, and uh, we've been up there now about 14 years. Um, we've been hunting there. Um, Mostly fields um, with a little bit of, uh, you know, 30, 40 acre patches of woods. And then um, uh, this one patch we went into, we, we did some work and uh, put some trails in and put a, put a water hole in there. We got back in off the fields as far as we could. There's a big, huge swamp right in the back side and we figured we could get them coming between the uh, swamp and the, the food source at the time. I think it was corn. and. Uh, so we were trying to cut them off in there, it's like a little sanctuary. The stand the location we had selected here, I had priorly, prior to that put some cameras up and, uh, and we had gotten some pictures of some, some decent bucks in there so we knew there was a few in the area and then also a lot of does and, and fawns. Um, so the opening day of archery season, um, we, we got in there really early, got all set up.
and uh, sure enough, it wasn't uh, an hour into it, we seen some does coming. And uh, it was actually a doe and a fawn. You know, you finally, it's the first day of the opener, and so you're all excited, you know, you've seen your first couple of deer. I thought, opening day, opening morning, I'm gonna get, you know, get that first one shot right away, and looking at that doe and getting all excited. All of a sudden, here comes this buck, right underneath us, we had to get, we got reset up, grab my bow, got all ready, and come right out. I mean, it was just right underneath us, right there. Was looking at the does, it was perfect. I smoked him up. <laughs> yes. Yes. Bobby was at a smack down her butt. Give me my Down right there. Right there. Boy, he's, I smoked him. I mean, I put it right on where I thought it was going to be, right behind the shoulder. It ran off, crashed. I looked behind, it hit a tree, tried to like go in between it. Just fell a little bit past that. It ran right to that tree. He's right there. He's down. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We got down out of the tree and uh, all excited, you know, the first buck of the year. And I didn't get it past you because I hit the shoulder on the other side. But there's blood right here, right away, all right? He's hit hard. Yeah, that dark red blood. Right here. This is the water hole. It dried up, we haven't put water in a while. We had deer in. When they came in, it happened fast. The buck was right there at 10 yards when we first seen it. He came right under the tree. Bobby got the camera and we were set up. Perfect. Eight yard shot from the tree. Yes. He crashed the tree over here. He's laying over there. Let's go get that bad boy. We get down there, we're tracking it. Really good blood trail. Must still be in my There he lays, right there, Bobby. Right there, there he lays. And uh, sure enough, wasn't 50, 60 yards away. It was all piled up right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. It ended up being a seven pointer. I don't care, that was fun. We had does in us. I was gonna shoot that doe. They were, they stood there forever. And all of a sudden Bobby's like, there's one right under the tree, it's a buck. Um, so I didn't even care, you know, we already had our buck down, it was 8.30 in the morning. I gotta get a tag on him. Tell you what though, we put our, we put our time in this year. We've been up here just about every weekend, putting minerals down and water holes. And... I mean, I put it right on where I thought it was gonna be right behind the shoulder, it ran off, crashed. I looked behind, it hit a tree, tried to like go in between it. Just fell a little bit past that, it was just awesome. Baby, are you here open in the morning, man? Yes, that's all about, baby. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Colby Chrysler Center. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Pro Designs, Sign and Printing Solutions. Canada Outdoor Adventures, professionally outfitted hunting trips from Canada, New Zealand, and beyond. At Kobe Chrysler Center, we know you have more important things to do than worry about your car. So let us take care of you. Whether you need routine maintenance or need a major repair, we are not just fixing your car. We are helping you get back to the things that matter to you. When it comes time for a new car, we'll be there, giving you the biggest selection with no pressure or red tape. If you're looking for a used car, know that our stock comes from people we know, people just like you. At Kobe Chrysler, it's all about making you feel at home and ready to hit the road. Welcome home to Kobe Chrysler.
conceptual design, quality printing, and custom applications. Pro Designs sign and printing solutions. Over 20 years of professional service and experience. Pro Designs in Medford, from original concept to finished product. Get the recognition your business deserves. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Offering professionally guided, all-inclusive packages, Canada Outdoor Adventures is a U.S.-based company specializing in great hunting adventures in Alberta, British Columbia, New Zealand, and beyond. Whether you're seeking that trophy of a lifetime, planning a hunt for you or your group, or taking your son or daughter on their first adventure, let Canada Outdoor Adventures handle all the details for you. To contact a pro staff member near you, visit our website, Canada Outdoor Adventures, the adventure of a lifetime. Hey, would you like to help us out on Outdoor Bound TV? If you've got a video camera, go ahead and shoot your recovery on your animal and you take us out to commercial break. Hi, I'm John Kirshner from Independence, Wisconsin. I'm here in Alberta. Stay tuned for more hunting action right after these messages. For details, log on to our website, www.outdoorbound.tv and click on the submit video button. It'll give you all the instructions right there. Next week on Outdoor Bound TV. Imagine spending nine days in the mountains of the Yukon with everything you need to survive on your back. You would expect that when this Wisconsin businessman takes a break from his hectic schedule, he would be found relaxing. Instead, he heads to the mountains with his friend and guide in search of the majestic doll sheep. In the past, being a 10-year-old meant a two-year wait in order to begin your hunting career. But under Wisconsin's new mentor program, 10 and 11-year-old aspiring hunters can harvest their own animal as long as they are mentored by an adult. It's even more special when the mentor is your dad. I'm a logger, currently a shoot. We'll be right back after these messages with some more whitetail hunting from Alberta, Canada. What was that? We'll be back after these messages? We'll be right back after these messages with some more <laughs> I wanted to say white tail again. Is that right? And, and we, oh, shoot. I, I gotta start over right now. It's just deer everywhere. Turn that thing off now. We're out of here.